I have so many ideas about the future exhibitions after I <laughs> heard your story so young. <laughs> Maybe I will approach you for sure. So, um, the process of uh, Yugoslavia's formation and its disintegration during the 20th century was heavily marked by wars. Although women started part, uh, practicing photography early on, it is rare to come across the recordings of wartime events. In this presentation, I will focus on two women taking photographs during the Second World War, as well as the works of three contemporary artists who refer to the war of the early 90s and indirectly the aftermaths of, aftermaths of the World War II. But let me allow um, <coughs> to start with a digression. Namely, two weeks ago, a dear friend uh, and colleague from the Institute of Art History showed me a photo of a group of young women in uniform, happily laughing, some smiling and smoking. And I'm not allowed to show this photo. Their enthusiasm and friendships are uh, almost palpable, and yet any other detail beyond their role as a women soldier <coughs> during the World War I remains obscure. A friend sought my perspective on the fact that women are playful, they joke and smoke, despite the fact that they are only 16 years old and one of these women <coughs> was his um, grandmother, probably implying that such behavior is somehow inappropriate, especially in wartime. However, it struck me that I was looking um, at the form of logical resistance to the horrors of war that they witnessed. In a similar way, we may discuss the images kept in the album of the Croatian painter Nasta Reutz, who captured them in collaboration with her partner, Alexandrina Onslow, a member of the Scottish Women's Hospital Society for the Transport of the Wounded. During the First World War, Onslow served on several fronts and received a medal for her service. In some photographs, we come across a group of women appearing relaxed, and smiling, having omitted from the frame whatever had captured their attention in, uh, moments before the photo was taken, and who are building a special so-called interpretative horizon, as Linda Alcoff called it. A horizon that highlights the roles that form one's social, social and political... Um, and poli Hello. What? It's not working. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was my fault. So, <laughs> a horizon that highlights the roles of one uh, uh, that form the um, one's social and political identity. Can these details uh, help us understand conflicts, wars, and other crises? What kind of visual experience is mediated uh, by the mentioned photograph of young women? which I'm unable to show, or the image of smiling women seated on the bench after tending to patients, seeing wounds, and helping children to survive the war. Uh, my goodness. The case of Elvira Kohn is interesting for, uh, from various perspectives. Her practice intensified when she moved to Dubrovnik in the 1930s and took reportage photos that she published in a local newspaper. While working for Mihal Cegovic studio, she captured commercial photographs and her artistic work was influenced by new objectivity. And while her earlier journalistic work remains insufficiently researched, the photos she took while she was in the concentration camp on the island of Rab are a special testimony. <coughs> With the establishment of the independent state of Croatia in 1941, she was dismissed from her position because of her Jewish heritage, but continued to work for Erzegovic uh, unofficially. Her images bear witness not only to authentic events and places, lending them the value of the historical documents, but also to the fact that they were captured by a woman who herself endured the horrors and humiliation of confinement. <coughs> The scenes from the Rab internment camp depict her reality. The photos of camp dwellings, crowds of people and children, on one hand, devastation, and on the other, a multitude, leave a powerful, a powerful uh, impression on the observer. 
the tidiness of the camp where she avoids details, as well as, as, well as the recording of the interior of one of the barracks, speak of her interest in maintaining a certain order of life, which, is given uh, which in given circumstances may help her survive. We interpret the photo she took after joining the partisans in a similar way, which shows circumstances outside of the conflict, an attempt to act on a human level by providing help, at least showing interest in the individual destinies. Although this period was dominated by male photographers, her photos show the quality she achieved and which can be compared without hesitation to a number of iconic examples. Several scene, uh, scenes filmed during the entry of the partisans uh, into Zagreb and the celebration of the war and exhibit, uh, and, uh, exhibit the range. Some align with the, her pre-journalistic interest, while others are focused on specific details. Individual encounters amidst the bustling crowd. Although the mood was um, likely ecstatic, Kohn preserves a sense of calmness in her photographs and the perceptual experience depends on what she personally experienced. Can, this thesis of gen can the thesis of gender and seeing be applied to her photographs? That is my question. Elvira, Elvira Kohn's photographs bear witness to the violence inscribed in her body. The fear she felt from the Nazis and her two-year uh, imprisonment in the camp. These experiences influence the discursive formation of the nation traditionally conceived as a primary masculine concept. Elvira um, Kohn talks about the violence and pain caused by the war through uh, complex uh, transac uh, transactions of the visual language that shows and uh, tells what happened, what the consequences are, and uh, what they did uh, on the individual level as well on the social fabric. Georgia Corin is far less known, a photographer whose work and life remain largely unrecognized. Both Elvira Corin and Georgia Corin were members of the photography section of the propaganda department of State Anti-Fascist Council for the National Liberation of Croatia. We even find a photograph of two of them together posing, and a photograph in which Corinne posed with, uh, with four colleagues. Her name was mentioned twice in newspapers on the occasion of the first federal exhibition of women photography, Women Take Photos, was the um, title of that exhibition, held in Belgrade in 1975. It is mentioned that she stood out because of her position as a woman with a camera in the midst of wartime events, expressing a strong interest in, capt in capturing so-called ordinary people who were assisting, uh, assisting the partisans. Along, uh, alongside photographs taken as keepsakes for the, uh, for the participants in these events and snapshots uh, of meetings, the preserved ex examples tells of the presence of women, their gatherings in traditional costumes with baskets, their delivery of food to the men, as well as spending time together or playing with young children. Despite the wartime uh, circumstances, Georgia Cohen managed to document the unfolding of everyday life, landscape, and people who are adapted to the new reality. Cohn and uh, Corin bore, uh, both bore witness to acts of violence. Although they took photographs during the war, they tried to represent the normalization of human relations. They accomplished this by focusing on social discourse, observing relations between people and even the victim landscapes, uh, devoid of any traces of disruption. Can we, on the basis of images of landscapes, uh, women in national costumes or photographs of women editing newspapers and socializing with each other during their leisure time, if they had any, the views that I quote, uh, gender and seeing is based on our social environment and the power structures therein, as Katrina Talman points out. 
The way in which we recognize gender issue is inherently tied to mainstream social conceptions of gender uh, appearances, activities, and artifacts. Discussions in analytic philosophy on perceptual learning and cognitive penetration can help explain how social information shapes our perceptual experience. And while looking at their photos, I ask myself, do I react to them differently because of my own gender position? Is this kind of thought epistemically and ethically harmful? In the end, if we apply the theories of gender and seeing, the most important thing is who is watching, who are we seeing, and how we will adapt the nuances of the descriptive and normative nature to our own interpretations. The unresolved issues that we inherited from the time of World War, uh, World War II reflected on the war that resulted in the breakup of Yugoslavia in the early 90s, the declaration of independent states created from former republics, and numerous nationalistic outbursts whose roots are tied with the past. The problem of utilizing and controlling photographs for social means is well known in the local historical and political discourse. On the eve of the breakup of Yugoslavia, specific images in the printed media be uh, began to appear, and Sandra was talking about that much uh, deeply than I will, I will just pass through. Uh, through them, a large number of photojournalists encouraged the escalation of political crashes into war. The question of truth, or at least reporting about the events that ob as objectively as possible, functioned through the prism of extreme social polarization. Many photographers during, uh, after during the homeland war, and this is how we call it here in Croatia, suggested that the objectivity of their work derives from the fact of witnessing <coughs> war events, ignoring the fact <coughs> that they use the image-based medium to justify their own national, nationalistic, religious, and other uh, views and uh, beliefs. Taking Secula's uh, claim that photography is already a social actor, never a completely innocent or objective bystander, as a starting point, we may raise the question of expected cliches and the visual stylization of scenes that flooded the TV and print media during wartime, as well as the mo photo manipul manipulation uh, aimed to create the enemy and produce the homogenization of one own nation. And this was really very nice described in Sandra's Vitalich book as well. Anna Opalic and Sandra Vitalich show several series of photographs recorded in the second half of the 2000s and beyond comment on the period of their childhood that escalated into the war that took place in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina from 1991 to 1995. Their photographs raise questions about uh, war is not visible. Um, and they, uh, what many of us have lived through. What are we looking at when, we, when uh, what we see is not uh, noticeably visible? They both focus primarily on the consequences of destruction long after the conflicts had officially ended. So far, this kind of women's approach gives us a different perspective and understanding of recent conflicts, especially if we compare them with the predictably, uh, predictable cliches and visual stylized scenes that flooded the media during the wartime in the 90s. Being uh, with the space is important for Anna Opolic, and she finds that which is invisible to the most interesting, to be the most interesting. She spent the, year, uh, the war years in the shelter in Dubrovnik, while in the early 2010s she took photographs in warrior places in Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina that, according to reports, were sites of mass graves. But the frequent practice of their displacement and destruction in order to hide the evidence of crimes contributed to a special relationship toward the place marked by war trauma. What kind of scenery is that? For Opalic, personally, it is unimportant whether she is in the exact location. Mm -hmm. Standing and feeling what she doesn't see and what she doesn't know is more important to her. 
She let the landscape speak, conveying the story with a simple visual narration, functioning along the lines of thinking through the visual, as Liz Wells writes in Land uh, Matters, as if writing one extremely long sentence with a photograph, encompassing the passage of time. There is no urge to appropriate or own the landscape, which is a procedure characteristic of patriarchal worldview. In addition, her attitude toward the state, toward concepts such as national pride, and especially toward the role of the church, which participated in the war and ideological conflicts, also changed through her artistic activities. The last series uh, she worked on in Zagreb was related to the Dotrushchina Memorial Park, where during the Second World War, the Ustashas shot several thousand people, primarily Serbs, Roma, and anti-fascists which is why it is considered the location of the large, largest mass crime in the history of Zagreb and one of the largest execution grounds of the Second World War in Croatia. This time, Opalic gave up, the, gave up photography because she didn't want to repeat the way she approached such, uh, approached such places. In the Otoshchina, she decided to walk spend time and indulge in the tactile, uh, tactile sensation of the land. She collected the fallen and partially decayed leaves and placed them on the scanner in a thick layer, wondering how deeply the uh, light would penetrate the substance. After that, she reduced the content and in the end printed the artist book Soil. The artist moves away from the rea rea relationship of power and political ownership of the certain place, negating it with the experience based on touch, smell, and other senses. Sandra Vitalic belonged to the same generation of, acad uh, of academically educated photographers as Anna Opolic. In the series Infertile Grounds, and she mentioned that uh, briefly at the end of her talk today, she points out the need to recognize topographical structure in order to include them in the collective uh, knowledge uh, of individual places of suffering. The matching of history and memory as interpreted by Pierre Nourat, their identity chainlings, how he called them, are broken and presented through a structure of artist's research of memory and amnesia as a standard polarity of human society. Vitalich stops at the places of mass executions and mass graves of victims of different regimes, of uh, the existence of, uh, of which is concealed for a long time, wondering how it is possible to photograph them. Infertile uh, ground is a story about society and how it deals with crimes in which the images are accompanied by text that is an attempt to speak naturally. The interpretation of history is important to her in a sense of opening up to traditions and visual metaphors, while the text provides information about where something happened and does not allow the viewer to deviate from the topic. In this way, she has contributed to the naming uh, to the naming of places that are not part of collective uh, memory, where she did not exclusively focus on the locations of mass or individual suffering resulting from the conflict uh, in the first half of the 90s, but also those from the Second World War, which were committed by members of the Ustasha army as part of the fascist regime, as well as the places where immediately after the Second World War, partisans as members of the victorious anti-fascist army carried out mass executions of members of the defeated um, and armies. Uh, Sandra Vitalic often deals with the topic that includes trauma and violence, and through her research and curatorial work, she deals with the war photography and questions about the ethics of photographic representation. Reflecting on how media narratives shape public opinion, she considers <coughs> that in the context of human dignity, particularly when it comes to the images of suffering and the, um, and the portrayal of uh, vulnerable groups. By moving to Sweden, the artist completely <coughs> renounced her former pos uh, position, becoming merely, uh, merely one among the almost anonymous immigrants. 
This personally precarious position of entering another culture and another language led to a change in the way she viewed the landscape with the gaze often directed in the ground. In the new work I just read back, which we're going to see a little bit later, there is no reference to history, and I quote, it's like I'm standing at the door and can't get into the society, in her own words. Thanks to artists, we engage in discussion about how the intricate nature, nature of war can be made visible and incorporated into artistic production, even when actual battles have not been seen and or photographed, but rather, in the words of Bruno Latour, mediated through, and I quote, research that does not deal with nature or knowledge, with things in them, but things with themselves, but with the, their in, uh, involvement in our collectives and uh, subjects, end of quote. In his seminal text, Bark, Georges de Biberman says that, I quote, the art of remembering cannot be reduced to inventory of found objects that are clearly visible, end of quote. And for him, culture is always a place of conflict where this history makes own form and visibility in the very heart of decisions and procedures. This, exactly, this is exactly the core of the procedure applied by uh, Andrea Kuluncic. In the project in which she researched and interprets the history of women political prison on Sveti Grgur and Goliotok, she inserted an, uh, an exquisitely produced photograph taken at the site of the former camp in a museum space. Applying the method of musealization and implementation of seemingly invisible violence in the new environment, she brings the heavy burden of the culture of memory into the context where aesthetic discourse prevails. The history of the little known women political prison on the islands of Sveti Grgur and Goli Otok where, where approximately 850 women were imprisoned from 1950 to 1956, convicted of betraying the country, the party, the people, and then President Tito, is one of the episodes that caused deep trauma in the society. Long-standing silence covered up humiliation and cruel, uh, cruel punishments. There are few documentary photos available about that place, where the repressive decisions that resulted in cruel re-education, as they call it, were only revealed to some extent in the early 90s. Andrea Kuluncic shoot on location, but her method of entering warrior's social strata is more important than the visual evidence itself. The process of re-territorialization takes place precisely in the exhibition space by confronting the viewer with a historical place performances and photographs. In this way, her work becomes part of a complex structure incorporated into our historical memory, memory, which we form with the passage of time and space. Anna Opalic, Sandra Vitelic, and Andrea Kuluncic interpret historical events whose conse uh, consequences have not been overcome to this day. The question arises, is it possible to contribute to the healing of society through artistic procedures. How to deal with the places symbolically marked by historical events and the fact they contributed to the formation of national identity. Does direct contact with the sites where conflicts and mass casualties occurred affect the photographic works of the mentioned artist? And can we recognize the specificities of the women's case in these examples? And I leave those questions open. Mm -hmm.